Kristen Shand. I work in the Department of Secondary Ed and I mainly teach courses in our single subject credential program so I'm training teachers to teach social science. I have designed several online and blended courses. Uh, Dr. Victoria Costa and I won the Colt Award uh, a few years ago for our Technology for Teachers course, which was 100% online. Um, I also teach Introduction to Teaching, uh, that class purely online, and then my Instructional Methods for Teaching Social Science is a blended course. ESC 442S. It is a course that all credential students take to learn strategies, instructional strategies, of how to teach middle school and high school social science. And for years that class was taught solely face-to-face, -face. Um, but then we decided to transition the course to be fully online for a specific population of students. They just needed that one instructional methods class and these students were all over California. We realized that that fit great for that specific population of students who just needed that one course to add that authorization in social science um, for that class to be fully online. But those students who were in my credential program and were out doing student teaching, the fully online class wasn't going to meet their needs, but they did need more um, time away from campus to be working on other things. So we took the online course and we moved it to a blended format so that my credential students who were enrolled in our program could kind of have the best of both worlds. They had the online component that enabled them to um, work on specific features of the course on their own time within, you know, the module dates and um, at their own location which served them very well and then we would meet on campus for the face-to-face -face components um, according to our schedule and that worked well too because they needed that peer interaction to discuss how their student teaching was going out in the field to work through problems that I couldn't even anticipate um, because each student is different based on their student teaching. So we went from a full face-to-face -to, -face to a full online to a blended. When I moved to blended with that course, I tried several different models. Not all of them worked very well. Um, and I learned several lessons along the way. The first time I did it, I decided to do a pre-post model where they would do a module online, usually a narrated presentation, um, with some sort of uh, student engagement activity that was online. Then we met in a face-to-face -face class, and of course, because you're doing a blended, you're doing online and face-to-face, -face, you have to um, adjust for seat time. You can't have what some people call a course and a half. Have them do things online and then have a full schedule of face-to-face -face class. You can't do that. It has to be reduced to account for that online time. So we, they would do an online module, then we would have face-to-face. -face. Um, I think I was doing a 50-50 model at that time where 50% of the time was online and 50% was face-to-face. -face. We would have a class um, discussion, a class activity, and then they would follow up with another portion of the online model, this pre-post. Well, that didn't work very well, and part of it was my fault, because I had no accountability measure to make sure that they did the online component before we met. So when I would ask um, questions when we got together to face-to-face, -to -face, it was pretty clear that several of the students had not engaged in the online thing. So that method, if it was going to work, um, would definitely need some sort of an accountabil accountability measure mm -hmm. factored in for the online component before the face-to-face. -face. Then moved to a rotation model after that where I, they would do a full module online and then a full module face-to-face -face, and then again another full module online, full module face-to-face. -face. So the accountability for that one was already fully built in because what they did online, they had to do the full module assignments, activities, submit that, and then we would have a face-to-face -face module and they would have to do the entire module face-to-face. -face. So that one um, worked better because the accountability measure was um, already 
in place simply because they had to finish the module. Uh, my issue with that one is that there was a, not a disconnect, but the fact that they were doing one whole module online and one whole module face-to-face, -face, and so the modules were functioning a little bit differently. I finally landed on a design that I really like. It's a two-thirds, one-third model. Two-thirds of the uh, module is online, and then one-third is face-to-face. -face. So it's a three-unit class of expected three hours of instruction per week. So what I would do is each module would be a two-week module, and so two-thirds of it was online. So they would do four hours of online lecture, activities, before we met. We met every other week for two hours and they would have to have the online component complete before they came to class because it was the expectation that they came into class with the knowledge from the online module. And then we would have some sort of a follow-up activity in class um, for the two-hour class session. Students would take what they did in the online module, they would discuss it, they would peer critique. We oftentimes would have a live um, instructional strategy, this is how this might look. And so that module worked well. It gave students the flexibility of the online component. They could work on that um, when they saw fit within the time frame of that module. They had to complete the online activities before they came to class. Um, once they came to class, they uh, were fully engaged in the class activity and the class discussion because they had that uh, information from the module. And then they had a few days before the activity was finally due in order to um, improve upon it based on what we did in class. So that two-thirds, one-third module where they just came to campus every other week um, worked very well for them, being that they're out student teaching, they're taking other classes during the credential program. Um, so that was a very good um, design, and that's one that I am currently sticking with after going through several other designs. I've done a couple different studies on this class. Uh, the first time that I employed the two-thirds, one-third model, I did a survey uh, with my students at the end of the class, and overwhelmingly they appreciated that model. They liked that they had some flexibility with time to work on the online component. Um, they liked that they didn't have to come to campus every week. That worked very well into their schedule. So. At and I wanted to know, were they truly engaging in the online course? And so I did ask them, it was a self-report survey, of course, but asked them how frequently they would engage in the different online activities. And overwhelmingly, most of them um, participated in the online activities with high frequency. There was a couple students who didn't like the online. They wouldn't have liked it no matter what model I had. They didn't want any kind of um, activities online. But out of a course of 35 students, there was maybe two or three who fit that. Everyone else was highly engaged in the um, uh, structure of the course. They really liked that they had that flexibility, but they also liked coming to campus to meet with their peers because that was very important to them in this program, that they wanted to share ideas, they wanted to share frustrations with the uh, their student teaching and the program and things such as that, and they, they got the chance to work that out. They did like that they had a live interaction with me because they could ask me real-time questions and get things clarified. But they also felt they didn't need to see me every week, which is fine. <laughs> they certainly don't need to see me every week. When I design my courses, I look at six different categories of instructional strategies and tools. Um, tools and strategies for communication, for collaboration, for collection, for presentation, for organization, and for interaction. And when I mean interaction, I mean interacting with the content, the material of the class, not interacting with others. That, I would say, is communication. I first start with 
um, the goals and objectives of that module. And based on those goals and objectives, I decide, OK, what kinds of activities I'm gonna, am I going to do? Would they best be in the face-to-face -face component or the online component? And then what tools am I going to use to um, facilitate that. I like to show them lots of different tools. So I do like to use Prezi and I'll do a voiceover in Prezi. Sometimes I'll do a PowerPoint or a keynote and I'll record it in Camtasia or in Screencast-O-Matic if I'm doing it pretty quickly. Um, other types of presentations that say may not be narrated, I will upload to a online um, slide share programs such as author share or slide share if i want to see the student like if they're giving me a presentation back and i want to see them in the uh, presentation i'll have them use novio or possibly present me where it can actually tape them as well and all the tools that i use with my students that they have to engage with are free. So sometimes that limits me, like in um, some of the presentation tools in order to record, it's a seven minute max. I say, great, your presentation is seven minutes. I will do a presentation and then it will follow up with, let's say, an organizational tool. So I'll have them create a mind map based on, you know, some criteria that I give them using, say, MindMeister or Mindomo or sometimes even Poplet. So the students will follow up with that. They might do some sort of an interaction and so find something on the web that's a tool that interacts with history. Um, there's lots of games and simulations and things like that that are interactive interaction tools and so we'll use some of those as well. So I use a wide variety of um, technology tools in the class based on purpose, either collaboration, communication, collection, presentation, interaction, and organization. I believe that there are four key principles in redesigning a course from a face-to-face -to, -face to an online or a blended format. Number one, you have to focus on the objectives of the course. Don't just see some technology tool that's being used and go, oh, I want to force that into my class somehow. It may not really work in your class. You have to look at first the objectives of the course without technology in mind. Just think of what is it that I want my students to know and be able to do by the end of this course. And first start there with your objectives. And then look at your course topics. Follow it with topics. Okay, which ones are more complex? Which ones are easier to understand? Which ones would do really well in an online? Which ones could I have lots of online activities for? Where do I need to um, incorporate some sort of a face-to-face -face instruction if you're doing blended or where am I going to put discussion boards and build community in an online course and so start with first those objectives and kind of work through that then decide okay what technology tools um, can I use to help meet these objectives so they have to meet the objectives if they don't don't use them even if you love that tool, it's a fabulous tool, figure out somewhere else to use it in some other aspect of your teaching. But if it doesn't fit in that course with those objectives, then you just have to toss it. I've tossed many things, things that I loved, tools that I loved, and I've tossed them because they just didn't work with the objectives of the course. Um, then you have to decide if you're doing blended on the weave what parts are going to be online what parts are going to be face to face and they have to blend together you can't just have completely separate things going on in online and face to face it doesn't make sense to the students you need what's called layering they need multiple passes through that content so have something that's online and then follow it up with something that's face to face looking at that same topic meeting that ob same objective in a different way where face-to-face -face interaction would really benefit them. And then finally, the fourth principle is to have an orientation to the course. Because if students don't know how to function in the online or the blended course, where to go to get resources, where to go to submit, where to go to look for due dates and assignments. They're going to struggle more with just dealing with the course than dealing with the content of the course. And that's not what you want. You want the functionality of the course to be a non-issue. So have 
an introduction, a screencast, a tutorial that goes through the online course in Titanium. This is how the structure is going to look week to week. These are the same rhythms and routines that you're going to see. This is where you submit. This is where additional resources will be held. If you need tutorials on how to use specific tools, have those embedded in the course so that students aren't fighting with the course. They should be fighting with the content not with the course structure itself. So if you're going to do a blended course, you can have an online part of the orientation and a face-to-face -face demonstration. But it should be very clear how that course is structured, where students go to find the activities, and where they go to submit um, their assignments.